Hi, welcome to my channel. This is Swift Bike Repair. My name is Spencer, and I've been repairing bikes since I was about nine years old. Uh, basically, on this channel, we're going to be mostly restoring older bikes. Um, eventually, I would like to set up my Mini Cooper to be a mobile bike station around Portland, Oregon, and I might take you guys along on that as well. Um, right now, we're going to be fixing up these two Schwinn Forest D bikes. The one on the right here is a road bike version, while the one on the left is the female version or the cruiser version. Uh, basically, the one on the left here has a full light kit, and the one on the right doesn't. Um, they're both in pretty good condition. I think the one on the left has been left out a little bit longer, so we're going to have to deal with some rust and discoloration on the chrome and spokes. So, come on inside. what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be taking these bikes completely apart and we're going to put them back together replacing some of the parts with Schwinn parts uh, original Schwinn parts if we need to um, we're probably going to have to replace the brake pads with those parts I'm um, gonna try to find some spokes but I am not sure they're pretty hard to find the original Schwinn spokes so we might have to go with just some generic spokes for this one uh, the spokes on this one are rusted, but this one was kept a lot better. I think it was inside most of its time. So basically, this one we're going to be tuning the spokes, and this one we're going to be respoking completely. So you're going to learn how to do both of those things. Uh, we also are going to be taking apart the hub on the wheel, and basically, you just have to re grease it and replace any of the ball bearings that look old or cracked or anything like that. Um, we're going to do the same on the back and in the crankshaft um, there's also a hub in there as well and we're going to be taking that apart and re-greasing and replacing any stainless steel bowl balls as well. Um, this one has a lighting kit. Um, it's basically just a generator that turns it on and off just like that and the wheel actually powers the lights. So we're probably going to have to rewire that and we're going to have to replace the bulbs and I think it will work great after that. Um, what else? We're going to take apart the cassettes on each of them and clean those up as much as we can. And all of the wires on the brakes and on the shifting, I think we're going to have to replace. I'm going to try to save the sleeves and just clean them out with a chemical bath or something like that. And uh, that will reduce the friction when you pull on the uh, on the hand brakes or when you um, shift and stuff like that. So that's that's all just to make it a lot easier. We're going to be taking apart our derailers and we're going to be giving them a chemical bath too, cleaning them up, re-greasing them, and making sure those are all good. Um, I think that is it. Basically, the reason I picked these bikes for our first episode is I wanted to find a bike that anyone could understand. Mechanically, if you just look at it and you're a beginner and you are just learning, you can kind of look at it and just figure it out on your own without much help. Um, so the nice thing about these bikes are these crank shifters. So instead of having a shifter up on the handlebar where you click it and it jumps to gear to gear, these crank shifters, you just pull it until you feel the gear that you want and you leave it there. So why that's nice is you just have to set how high your derailleur is allowed to go, your top limit for your derailleur, and your lower limit for your derailleur. And that's all you have to do. And once you have that set, 
and if you have some tension in the line, your gears are just going to shift perfectly. Like, it never has to be tuned for a long time because you're just setting the limiter and the only time you have to tune it is if that wire stretched out a little too much, but it's really easy to tune that. So I wanted that to be something for beginners for the first video and that just makes it a lot easier than setting the actual jump between each gear. Um, I believe that's it. Oh, I'm also going to be cleaning up the chrome a little bit. And I know a lot of people say that you shouldn't clean up the chrome because you shouldn't clean up any of the surfaces. They want it to have the original patina. And I'm not going to mess with the paint because I agree with that with the paint. But on the chrome, since these are my personal bikes, I just want it to pop. And these aren't very rare bikes. If it was a more rare bike, I would totally agree. You gotta save the patina 100% and do what you can with what you're given. But I'm trying to just restore these with original parts and everything like that. But the chrome, I think I wanna clean up just so it has that pop once we're done. Um, other than that, <clears throat> I think that's, that's pretty much it. So let's get started on the cruiser.